Good morning, everybody. How are we all doing today? It is Monday, start of a brand new week. And um, here's my Monday morning little chit chat with you. It is all about the soul and the ego. Now, loads of people um, always want to know what their soul's purpose is. And while I was away last week, I was reading lots of books and um, I tend to drift off when I'm reading a book. So I read three books last week. One was the, um, it was called The Big Magic. One was called Soul's Journey. And one was called, at last, I read it, Many Lives, Many Masters. Very, very interesting books. And what I tend to do when I'm reading a book is, um, I read a paragraph, a couple of chapters, and then I like just daydream and drift. And I process things. And some things in books really resonate with me. I think, yeah, that makes sense. And there's other things I think that don't make sense to me. And then that's when I tend to kind of drift into another little state and start to get my own influences with it. And one of the things that was um, on there was to do with, um, Cole was trying to talk to me and I was on the beach or on the, by the pool. Cole was trying to talk to me and he was like, uh, Kate, Kate. And I was just in my own little world. And he's like, Kate, Kate. And I was in my own little world. And then Josh had to nudge me. He was like, mum, mum, Cole's trying to talk to you. And I was so gone. I was so, I didn't even, I wasn't in the pool anymore. I wasn't in anywhere. I was completely in my own little world, getting all my own little information for things. So, hello. Um, so in that, in that own little space is when I start to I either get like messages from um, my higher self, from my guys, wherever. And that's where I start to process things. So during these books, there was a lot of reading about the soul. Um, and some of them were to do with a little bit of ego, but not so much. That part I was trying to process myself. So I thought I'd do a little chat today about how you really find your soul's purpose and how you can separate that from your ego. Now, your soul is what you will find is, um, your soul knows everything, your soul experiences everything with you, your soul goes through all your little journeys, everything with you, and will pick up what it needs to pick up, the experience, the energy, the movement, the feeling, the emotions, the whole, whole shebang is in your soul. And in my opinion, that's what we're here for, for our soul's growth. When we start to um, not follow our soul's path, we're led by our ego. Now our ego, some people think, you know, no, I haven't got an ego, but actually we all need an ego. We all need an ego to get up and to get doing things. If we didn't have an ego, we, we just wouldn't do anything. But our ego um, can interfere for sure with things. Morning Kerry, how are you? Morning Wendy, I've got my glasses on. Morning Michelle. Um, so our soul can interfere, our ego can interfere with things and can stop us doing what our soul's purpose is or it can go the other the other way and um, still not be talking about our soul's purpose but talking about what our ego wants to talk about now here's an example um when we share on social media like i'm doing now that's our ego that's our ego um anything to do with um when we you know a lot of us a lot of us who uh, have reviews and we share a review, that's our ego. Our soul's already experienced that particular thing. So when I'm doing a reading for someone, during the process of that reading, that's my soul working. Um, my soul is experiencing whatever they're experiencing um, and no one else knows what's going on because it's just me and them. So there's no need to talk about it, there's no need to share about it um, because our soul is experiencing it. Then if I was to say to them, you know, that was a great reading, can I have a review? Which I do sometimes, I do sometimes. I don't often do it, to be honest. I forget half the time to ask for a review because you're so in the moment of things, so in, in the moment. Um, and actually, you, you know, it's the soul's purpose to do that, go through that situation. So you don't necessarily need to share stuff. You don't need to do the reviews for your soul. You do those for to help with your business, but it is your ego that is asking um, or putting those things out there. Mainly in this type of work, it is because obviously we want to get more work. Um, whatever work it is, you do whatever job you do. A good review is nice, it puts it out there so other people can see it and then other people can buy um, or purchase whatever it is and book. But that is our, our ego, 100% that is our ego doing that. And that's fine, that is fine, I'm just sharing with you. Now, the um, part, some parts of Soul's journey is to share experiences 
um, to help others. Not necessarily in the way of, I've done a really good reading, look at this everyone, look at me, um, but more to do with like maybe what I'm doing now, hopefully sharing something with you to help you expand. Some people, their purpose will be to share their experiences to help other people learn. So your soul has already experienced that particular, so I'm just going to use the readings for an example, that particular reading, that particular session, and your soul has absorbed and taken everything that it needs from that. Anything above that becomes your ego. When we follow our soul's plan, when we follow our soul's purpose, everything kind of um, feels, you, you feel it, you really feel it, you really feel the uh, essence of things there. When we start to um, be led by our ego, that's when mistakes and things can be made. Now, if you're in a friendship group or you've got a group, lots of people say, you know, uh, and I've posted it before, like your soul, uh, your vibe is your tribe. Well, um, we get comfortable in that. We get comfortable with like-minded people. We get comfortable with, with um, people that are in our soul tribe. But actually, what's our soul learning? If we're all in the, on the same boat, what's our soul learning in that? So your soul prefers really to be out of its comfort zone and to learn from those people that maybe not be in your tribe there. Now we've probably all had it, I've definitely had it, where you've been in situations with people, relationships, um, friendships, work, jobs, where it's not feeding you anymore. You know in your heart of hearts that you don't really want to be there anymore. Um, perhaps it's a relationship you know is just not going anywhere and your soul is telling you like this is not good for you it's like this is not good for you and then things go from bad to worse the job that you're in it's just not fulfilling you it's not making you happy so your soul's like why are you still here why are you still here and sometimes our ego can get involved when we've got low self-esteem when we haven't got confidence so we stay in that secure place because we're frightened of moving so we're allowing our ego to step in there and produce that fear or to block us with that fear when, it's our, when we're listening to our soul, we'll be like, see ya, I'm moving on because the purpose has already been done, I've learnt what I needed to learn, and now actually I need to move forward with things. When you start to understand, really connect to your soul and think about things when they happen and kind of have a word of yourself at the end of each day and be thinking, what did my soul learn from that? How has my soul progressed from that? When you've got to make a decision, sometimes you can ask yourself, what is this gonna, how is this gonna benefit my soul? I know for sure I've stayed in situations with people where it wasn't benefiting me anymore. And there was this like nagging in the back of my head, like you need to get out from this. But my ego was like, no, no, because if I do this then I'm gonna get more of this, no, no, if I stay here. When you start to really work in alignment with yourself, um, you can put that ego fear to one side and follow your soul. Think, do you know, it's, it's almost like a gut feeling. It's the similar as a gut feeling there. There's a very fine line between the two, but there is a, a difference there. Otherwise they'd be called the same thing. But when you start following that soul's pathway, that soul plan, um, and what feels right, exactly feels right for you without letting your ego come in or without letting um, anything else come in and kind of like be saying to you no you shouldn't be doing this or um, it's safer if you stay here and there then you're preventing your soul from really having its own journey what it needs to be doing so things could become a lot more challenging things could become a lot more difficult until you're ready until you actually finally listen oh my soul needs to do this so when you're doing things this week, guys, just have a little check in and think, how's that going to benefit my my soul? Is like um, gossiping about that person benefiting my soul? No. Is the choice that I'm going to make around that going to benefit my soul? I don't know. So you have to be really in tune and think to yourself after everything, what is going to be good for my soul? How are things going to work for that? Because that will really help you identify the difference between your own ego and your soul okay now once you've got the concept of it it becomes quite easy quite easy to then start to um, just read some comments and I can't see put my glasses on it becomes quite easy then to identify the two and you can make much easier judgments when you've got the two uh, separated there morning bitsy morning Kathy morning Mika morning Lisa morning Helen morning everyone 
So um, your soul's journey is going to be different for everyone. Your soul's purpose is going to be different for absolutely everyone. No one can tell you what is good for you. Only you can feel what is good for you. Only you really know if you're in the right place or not so there. Now, when you are, for me, when you are in the right place, everything flows. You're happy because your soul wants you to, to experience that happiness as well. You're at peace. Finding um, inner peace is a massive part of your soul's journey. Even when there's traumatic things, and sometimes our soul has to go through traumatic things to be able to learn, you don't have to carry that tra traumatic experience forward. Your soul has got it now. Your soul has, has accepted it. Your soul has gone through that. It's your head your ego and your head and your mindset that continues it, that carries it on and that makes it then become an issue, makes it then become a block, makes it then become a drama, makes it then turn into something that maybe it didn't need to. So you can do, um, you can reassess your life where you are now and think to yourself, you know, is, am I really happy in this place? Am I really contented? Am I at peace with things? I, ideally, your soul wants you to become at peace. Now, when we cross over, um, in my opinion, is that you do have a little bit of a reflection over your life. Eventually, I believe that you um, pass over and then you go through that transition period. But at some point now, when you've accepted things a bit more and you're a bit more comfortable there, that's when you'll start having your life review and you'll feel everything that you've gone through, but you'll also feel things that you've maybe put other people through as well there which is obviously why it's much better to be kind and caring because it's going to be easier for you when you get to the other side and um, anything that you've done that you know perhaps wasn't the right move and you purposely knew it wasn't the right move but you did it anyway you're going to come that's going to come back um, and part of that learning process and part of that um, shedding process when we come over the get over the other side but if you can find inner peace here and be very happy with where you are happy with your decisions happy with your choices following what is right for your soul the process on the other side is going to be 10 times easier but it also means you're living a life that's a lot more harmony, a lot more in balance. And that's ideally what we've got to do in this world for everything. If we lived, if everyone lived by their soul, if everyone lived by what felt right and understood their soul and didn't allow their ego to mess things up, honestly, the world would be a much, much happier place. We wouldn't have the, the walls, we wouldn't have the arguments, we wouldn't have the stresses that go on and on around the world because they're all ego led. They are all led by wanting to own this, have this, control this. That's not to do with your soul. That's gonna to be to do with your ego. Your soul is the experience through things, okay? Now, um, yes, some people have got to experience some un un neg negative things, some things that aren't nice, and that might be through somebody else doing something that you will end up experiencing it. But even if those persons didn't do it, if it was part of your soul to go through that, you would still experience that on some level somehow. My my understanding, my feeling is um, when we have like our life choices and destiny and people talk about your soul's purpose and your destiny, my feeling around it. Um, and this is where when I'm reading and when I'm going to perhaps a lecture and I'm learning from someone, this is where I can't every single time I'm like pull away from it and then I'm like processing it. Does that feel right to me? Yeah or no? And if it doesn't, why? And that's then where I start to get extra information downloaded to me, sent to me from wherever, picked up from wherever. Um, and that's where I think, OK, no, actually, it's this, it's that. And then I tweak things um, or things get shown to me that make it more easier. There is a million and one things that we're never going to know about. And there is, it's, you know, the, I'm talking in black and white terms and it's not black and white. There is a grey area in everything. And that grey area, sometimes we're just not going to know about. It's just going to be a little bit uh, too much for our brain, too much for our brain to comprehend in this world because we're a dense energy. Do things really matter? Not really, because when we're dead, soul, our soul will, will know things. And will the material stuff particularly, obviously we can't take that with us. So it's all about experience. It's all about finding that inner peace within yourself and it's all about experience there. And your soul's journey to learn. So if you think about when you, um, okay, I know someone, let's do this. Um, if you think about 
when you're saying to somebody, you know, I was so lovely to that person, I was so nice to this person, um, I can't believe they've done all this to me, I was so, I was so lovely, and I've continued being lovely, and I'm telling you that I'm sending them all the light, and I've posted it all over Facebook and Instagram that I'm a lovely person, and that I'm doing all these lovely things, and I've gone and I've spent some, um, given a hundred pound to charity this week, and I helped a homeless man this week. Let me share everyone, let me tell everyone how wonderful I am, because I've, I've helped this person, and I, <clears throat> oh, I did this amazing healing, um, and this person who couldn't walk before, and now they can fly, and that's all your ego. Your soul has already experienced it. You don't need to tell anyone else. You don't need to um, let the world know how amazing you are, or let your friends know, let the social media know how amazing you are, because your soul already knows. So the minute that we start to um, do all of that, sometimes it's for people who are so insecure, um, so in a place where they've just, they're not at peace with themselves, they're not happy with themselves, so they have to tell everyone because they're trying to be that person, they're trying to say to them, look how amazing I am. Um, but actually, our soul already knows what we've done. Now, I know other people who, um, Colin is 100% one of these, who does things, and um, beautiful things, never tells a soul, never ever tells a soul. Um, I've, I've seen him, you know, he's in the pool when we were away, saving all the little flies that have fallen in there. And the boys are like, what's he doing? Is, is he looking for something? And I was like, oh no, he's saving the flies. He's not gonna go and post that all over the place. Oh, I saved some flies today. But there would be people that did that. There's other things I've seen um, amazing people do, and they've not gone on. I mean, we did all this before social media came about, but for somehow the ego has, has got massively involved. And that stops our growth then, because while we're busy telling everyone how wonderful we are, our soul's like, okay, I'm waiting for the next thing, I'm waiting for the next thing, but I've got to wait now because you're telling everyone. So <clears throat> just um, when you're posting things, when you're sharing things, and this is just my opinion, just have a little think, like how does that soul, how does that serve your soul? Is that really serving your soul or are you serving your ego? Are you feeding your ego? If you're super sensitive, if you're super vulnerable, if you're super, um, in, you've got massive insecurities, that's something you're gonna to need to be working on. That's something that your soul needs to work on because those insecurities are being fed. You're not helping yourself by doing that. You'll need to understand why am I doing that? And it really does come back to everything, every question, everything you do, how is that gonna help my soul? How is that gonna help my purpose? How is that gonna feed my soul? So ask yourself like, if you're in the most amazing relationships, are you? Is your relationship a 10 out of 10? Obviously everyone has a bit of a dodgy time, but in general, are you happy in your work? Are you really um, thriving? Are you really enjoying? Do you get up and be like, oh, I can't wait to go to work today. I can't wait to see all the people I work with or can't wait to do the job I do. Because if you're not, if you're like, oh God, I can't bear this job, it's Monday morning again, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. You're not listening to your soul's purpose there. It's just on hold because you're not in that best place. It's not as easy as just saying, jack your job in, but it could be. If you're not in a good place somewhere, then you might have to, you know, it could take some time, you might have to go back to college, you might have to think, do you know what, what would really make me happy? What would be my soul's purpose? Now, um, there's a lot out there on, lots of things have been expanded on, changed the name, tweaked, twisted, and then somebody else produces something from it. Your soul is very, very close to your inner child um, area. It's all, all connected around your solar and sacral chakras there. Um, and the inner child, again, children, they're just out there having fun, aren't they? They're just enjoying their life. They're just um, expressing their sounds through their soul. They're not going around telling everyone else afterwards how amazing it was. They're not going around afterwards um, putting all social media, oh, I did this today or I did that today. I'm talking about children. Um, they are just enjoying it. They are just enjoying it. All these... Um, beautiful people that are posting them like on on the instagram now these lovely young people um look at me look at me and it's all like just feeding their ego it's not it's not their soul's purpose they're actually you know it's, it's fake book isn't it out there a lot of it um i used to work with someone and they would have a horrendous time 
in the real world with people, particularly family members. And then at the end of the day, they'd I'd look at their post and they'd be like, oh, you know, I'm so grateful for my daughter or whatever. And I'd be like, you were moaning about them today. It's complete, you know, what you see out there is not always, not always what you get. And that leads us into competition. That leads us into thinking that that person is leading a better life than us or that person is doing this, that person is doing that. That is all our ego. That's our ego trying to be that person, trying to uh, claim things and, and trying to wrap up in that world. It's not going to do your soul any favours. Your soul is, your soul knows. You can't hide from it. Your soul knows. Um, you can't tell a lie. Our ego, we can tell lies too. Our ego, we can um, make it to we fake it. Our ego, we can um, try and convince ourselves, which sometimes ends up pickling the mind even more. Our ego will be bring us our anxieties, our ego will be bringing us our fears, our ego will be bringing us any blocks, I can't leave that person because of this, or I can't do this because of that, that's all going to be down to our ego and the way that we think. And it's like I said, it's not black and white, there's lots of grey areas, lots of grey areas. Um, and if you've got lots of things like anxiety, really severe anxiety, and, and you may need extra help and extra support, on those blocks there it might not be just as easy as like we're just tapping to your soul because your soul knows but once you can start to tap into your soul once you've had the help support that you need you know I, I say to clients a lot of the time there's a particular tarot card that comes up um, to, for me for mental health the eight of swords and our mind is very powerful um, and our mind will block us when we need to it also does the reverse. It helps us achieve things and it helps us strive for things. But our mind can sometimes block the most important things. And then we're like, we can't do this, we can't do that. And you know, even the law of attraction, that's built on what your soul. So lots of things have been built on and added to and created from things. To help everyone comprehend, <clears throat> one person is gonna work with the law of attraction, one person is gonna work with the inner child, one person is gonna work on the soul, but ultimately it all comes to the same space. All, ultimately it all comes from trying to find some inner peace and trying to find your soul's purpose. <clears throat> but there will be lots of people that have diversed and um, created different techniques to do things to help different people because we're so diverse because we're so different um, and some things float your boat and some things don't there but your mind can uh, if you can think in a negative way you can think in a positive way if you can put blocks in front of you you can unblock those nobody else would have done that that's just what you've created that's just what you've done and there may be a reason behind that but you still allow that reason to happen so ultimately, taking personal responsibility for everything makes life so much easier, so much easier. If you can take responsibility for the way that you acted around something, the way that you allowed something to happen to you, instead of the blame game, instead of, oh, they did this, they did that. Yeah, they might have done, but it's down to you how you react, 100% down to you how you react. It's going to be easier for others, and, and some of it's going to be quite difficult. But when you've worked on yourself a lot, like I have, um, it, things are a lot quicker and a lot easier and you know there's this thing about the karma the soul having to relive karma things I'm not too sure about that I'm still working on how that feels with me because I don't karma energy um, the traditional you're gonna get bad karma that doesn't really wash with me I, I believe that the energy we give out um, our words have a vibration our energy has a vibration so actually I think when you're the one saying your karma is gonna get you it's more likely to come back on you because you're the one that's projecting that vibration if I was to do something not very nice but I felt fine about it my soul knows my soul knows the truth so my soul knows if I've done something right or wrong but if I'm like quite happy with something wrong that I've done, I won't necessarily get bad karma from that because I'm not projecting it. I'm not projecting that. Um, but if I have projected something negative to somebody purposely there, then I will get that kind of energy back. But I'm not necessarily going to get the karma energy that you would think I'm going to get back. But your soul knows. So when you do cross over, and that's where your soul then is laid bare and there is no hiding from anything, that is when you're gonna come up with it. But also your soul wants you to be at peace, your soul wants you to have that inner peace. So if you've done lots of bad things, things that just are um, a bit shitty, 
that's not going to make you feel good in ultimately it's just not going to make you feel good even if you feel like i've done nothing wrong i'm all right with being a bit of a bitch ultimately it will it will catch up with you because ultimately you're just not going to be in that happy space so be careful with your words because your words do have a vibration even funny ones you know we do it funnily we might sort of um i don't know take we do a bit of banter with someone um and we do it with a bit of jess and that's that's all cool but our soul our words do have a vibration definitely um and the same as when we say that we can't do something or we're worthless or um we're i don't know whatever it is our, our words have a vibration so we have to be really careful what we say and how we say it there because that will create the energy space around ourselves and then your soul's got to work double hard of trying to get out of that because that's been created from your ego to be create that so i just wanted to share today something on trying to help you guys understand your soul's purpose no one can say to you this is your soul's purpose you can go and have readings all day long and they might say to you, this is your soul's purpose. This is your soul's purpose. We've probably got a million different soul's purposes. We've probably got so many different ones. Um, I think it'd be very hard to find exactly one thing of what it is. Ultimately, I think it's probably just going to be to find inner peace and to find balance and harmony. Um, but how we go about that is our destiny. Now, I've just mentioned a bit about how I feel about the destiny. For me, I feel like we get born on when we're meant to get born and, and we pass when we're meant to pass ish again i think it's not quite black and white there i think there's a gray area some people say that you get a couple of different choices of when to pass um and we've heard lots of um experiences where people do die and then they have those um near-death experiences then they get to come back and they say we met so and so we met so and so and they told us it wasn't our time or we had a choice whether we wanted to come back so those stories have been validated. <coughs> so there is, <coughs> excuse me, there is a grey area within all of that. Um, but for me, it's like when you're here and then when you go. What you, your destiny is what um, the roads that you go down. So you're destined to to do this. You're destined to meet that person. You're destined to meet that soul to experience those things. But your free will. That's the word I was looking for. Your free will um, is how you navigate that. Your free will tells you whether to go left or right. So you have free will around something. Um, so you might be like, okay, in this lifetime, I've got to experience this, this, and this. Love, joy, um, sadness. Let's just use those. And then um, you're here on earth and you get presented with different directions, different roads to go down. And that's your free will, which road you take, how you're going to go about that. Now, when you're on your soul's path, it's going to be fairly easy to go down those roads, to choose those roads, because your soul knows what you've got to experience. So your soul knows that to go, go down that road, you're going to experience joy and happiness and, and whatever down that road. You're still going to experience it down this road or down that road, but your, each road will give you a different way of experiencing it. But your soul knows that it's got to experience it. Your free will comes in a little bit with your ego as to the direction of things that are going. Now, if you're on a pathway that it just isn't right for you and your soul's just like in dire straits, not learning anything there, um, and your ego's taken over, your free will there of like making the choices, making the decisions, but perhaps not making the right ones, there could be obstacles put in the way. And you're like, why is my life so bad? Why are things so bad? And you're not listening to what's going on. And then thing, you carry on down that same pathway because your ego is saying to you, no, I can't make a change. No, I can't leave this job or I can't leave that person. And you're not listening to your soul. Of, Get out quick, go down a different road. So things become worse. Things become um, much more challenging, much more difficult. And then you're saying even more, why is my life so bad? And um, no matter what I do, it's just wrong. It's just sad. It's just this, it's just that when you get to the point where it's so bad all you can do is move all you can do is jump ship all you can do is is take a break from life um and lockdown was a complete you know exactly like that we just had a break from things again i have different views around what happened there um but um i don't think it was all about the jab by the way i don't think it was about that i think it was more about standing up not having it i think it was more about actually not that not having it i think it's more about collective people um 
forming their freedom of speech more than being controlled. But that's another story. So anyway, um, yeah, once you get to the point where you just cannot carry on anymore and you have to take a complete break out, and for some people it's going to be like a complete burnout, it got that bad, they didn't listen, it was a complete burnout. For others it's going to be a little bit easier that you step out, but it might be quite a catastrophe of stepping out. So I've had some things that have happened um, in friendship groups that have just been terrible, absolutely awful, but I sure, sure, sure um, believe that the universe was saying, do you know what, we have to make it that bad, otherwise you'll go back to them in some way, otherwise you'll have a connection with them in some way. So we have to make it so bad around you that you never have that connection with them again because they're not part of your soul group anymore, they're not part of your soul's family and your soul learning anymore. So even though something might blow up and be horrific, it's the only way sometimes that we can separate from that soul. That's the only way that we can move away from where we're at. But once we've moved away, once we've healed and worked on ourselves, for those that need a little bit more, once we've worked on, once we've healed, we then take a different pathway. So that road that we went down might not have been the right road. We experienced what we needed to experience, but when we were done, we needed to go down a different road. So then we start listening to our gut feeling, we start listening to our soul, we start listening to the signs around us. And we start tap tapping in and start thinking, do I feel all right with this? Does this make me feel happy? Yeah, it does. How many of us have gone through a horrific time only to come out the other side to go, actually, I wish I did that sooner. Actually, that change that I hated was better. And it could take five minutes for some, it could take five months for others. But generally speaking, it ends up with a better sense of healing. Even through the most traumatic things, there is, there is a silver lining of a, a different level of learning, a different level of understanding. And that's what your soul needed to experience, not necessarily the traumatic period, but the understanding, the bigger picture of it all there. And like I said, it's gonna be different for everyone. How can you really tap into your soul? Sitting in the power is one major way, sitting in the power, allowing your ego to stop, allowing your mind to stop, allowing those thoughts that are yours to stop and going deep and feeling it and asking yourself in that sitting in the power, what is good for my soul? Try and sit in the power every day. Try and, and sitting in the power is literally when we talk about sitting, it's just sitting, just sitting quiet, not following a guided la 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 meditation, not doing anything other than just sitting and thinking, what does my soul want to learn today? What did my soul learn today? What benefit has that had for me? What have I learned from that experience? And how am I gonna take that experience forward? How am I gonna make that into something better tomorrow there? And ask, be honest with yourself, you know, because your soul knows you can't not be honest with your soul. You can be fake book there, but your soul knows. So be honest with yourself. And when you are honest with yourself and you're truly tapping into your um, soul's power, it is very empowering, hugely empowering. And <clears throat> you'll find that you start to A, make better decisions, but you're, you find you're just more at a peaceful state, that you don't necessarily need to do all this drama on social media, that you don't need to um, prove anything. We try and prove things to people, and that's our ego. Our soul knows. Our soul, we don't have to prove anything for our soul. It knows that. All we have to do is nourish it. All we have to do is feed it, nourish it, um, and love it. So then we ask ourselves, how can we do that? How can we feed our souls? By doing something you enjoy, by doing something that makes you feel good, by doing something that is um, healthy for you, is, is good for you, by doing loving things, compassion things, by bringing harmony and peace into your life. So if you're not there, that's where you need, that's where you, in my opinion, morning Paulie, morning Debbie, morning Anne, morning Jane, morning Charlotte, morning um, Paul, Kerry, everyone, Jordan, everyone. So if you're not there yet, if you're, <coughs> if you're still making lots of mistakes, if you're still in a position where you're just not feeling happy, if you're still in a position where you feel like you need to share everything with everyone all over the place, um, and if you're aware that, it, that it's your ego, then just have a step back. Now there will be some people that I, st I know that will be like, no, I'm, I'm not egotistical at all. I'm... Um, I'm a, I'm a healer, for example. I'm a really good person. I heal all these people every day. I'm amazing, but I don't have I don't have an ego. It's not me. It's spirit. Yeah, it is still you. It is still you because you're talking about it. You're sharing it. You're telling everyone how, how wonderful. That ain't spirit. That ain't spirit. Um, 
the spirit would be another different altogether, different altogether. Um, it's small when people say spirit made me do it. They, they don't really make you do anything. It's you that does it. They're there to assist, to guide, um, and to prove life after death. They're not there to make you do something. That comes from you, that comes from your ego, um, which is the good part of the ego, and that comes from your soul, your soul's desire. That doesn't come from spirit. Soul and spirit are two different things. That doesn't come from, your, your, um, from the spirit world. And again, these people that I've had, if you were to really, if they were to break it all down, they would, under, they would understand that side of things. So understanding your soul and your soul's purpose can only be done when you really connect to your soul and when you can separate your ego, okay? Saying that spirit made you do things, <coughs> that spirit made you do this, is you're not there for me, you're not there. Spirit just don't make, why, why would they make you do things? You do the things, you're a human. Otherwise you might as well stayed in the spirit world. If you were gonna be led by spirit all the time, um, you might, well, you know, you need to have a human experience. So that doesn't make sense to me when people say that. I've learned over the years to shut my mouth though. I've learned over the years just to smile and go, mm, okay. Um, yeah, I share what I share on my, my own social media, but um, I've learned to avoid drama of my own opinion on things and that's all it is at the end of the day my opinion some of you might be like no 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 i definitely disagree and that's that's absolutely fine i like that um because like i say these books that i read there were certain aspects of the books that i read that i didn't agree with um i'm i'm understanding past lives a lot more after reading those books i didn't really understand it at all i'm having an understanding of past lives and parallel lives um and a lot more and i believe that our soul has can have multiple um, lives, lives within lives as well, that's another thing, um, but I believe that, uh, I, I understand that our spirit and our soul are two different things, our spirit is our personality, our spirit is, like when I die, Kate, my spirit's gone, dead, gone, it can come back to, um, if I want, and it's down to me, so someone can't conjure up me at all, if in the spirit world, it's definitely down to the spirit world if they want to connect, there's no way on earth that, uh, there's no way that um, someone can de say, I definitely can get that person for you. It don't work like that. If they do say that, A, run a mile, um, but what they could be picking up is all the memories from yourself. Your whole aura, your soul, takes every memory, not just from you, but from all different lifestyle, lifetimes and um, family members as well, because that's all connected. So if, uh, um, if somebody came, if I died, for sure, I'd only pick certain people I'd connect with. Um, and if someone else said like, yeah, I can get anyone through, nah. And the information might be correct, but like I said, they'd be feeding off the, you, they'd be feeding off your energy. They, they wouldn't have that spirit contact, don't, don't work like that. And I'll tell you a little example. Um, I did a reading for someone the other day and um, the dad come through. So I was like, I've got your dad here, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, do you know what? But he's talking about your mum, but I don't have your mum here. But he's given me information that all links to your mum. So I was able to give the information and the guy was like, yeah, that's all correct. Yeah, I understand that about my mum. But I was like, I don't feel like I have your mum here. I know I've got your dad, but your mum isn't here. But however, I'm still being fed the same information, but it's via your dad. And he said to me at the end, um, I was a skeptic and I wanted to see how it all worked. And you proved to me by saying that my mum wasn't there because my mum told me that she would never ever go, come through to a medium. So you saying that my mum wasn't there, but my dad was and was feeding, he said that was the proof. So when you understand the difference between psychic and mediumship, that really, that's, that's your soul connection working properly. So when um, the spirit world get the choice of whether they want to come through, because it's all down to personality, they might not like the medium that's, that's in front of them, they might not, um, there's charlatans out there for sure. So if that medium is there, I ain't gonna go into them. There's certain mediums I'm definitely not gonna go to when I die. Um, whether that's uh, my choice now or when I get up there, I don't know, but at the minute, that's. That's what it is. And that's what I'm saying, spirit have a choice. Spirit have a choice over there, definitely. Um, and then, you know, even, I'm not even gonna go down this road on this chat, but the trapped souls, I don't get it, I don't get it, because there's always someone being met. 
Um, and again, um, the people that are in that limbo, I don't even like the word limbo, that are in that floating stage, that are in that floating stage, they're all right, they're okay. But they have their guide there. They have their spirit people there. I don't know why they need humans to assist them. And that's just my opinion, personal opinion. I know lots of people that do soul work, but I don't understand what makes it easier for us to help them than because they're dead. And, and some people have said, but um, they're not aware that they're dead and they are, um, they need to see familiar faces from the earth or they need to see human faces from the earth plane because they're not aware that they're dead yet. So seeing a dead person will freak them out. But surely seeing someone they don't know will freak them out more than what they are over there. And when you're over there, it's not about seeing, it's about feeling. So they would feel their people. They would um, feel their guides. They would, um, yeah, just don't make sense to me. But that's that's just mine. That's just mine. And again, could be because that's not going to happen to me. You are what you create. You are what you think. If you think, um, you know, for me in the spirit world, everything is on thought. <clears throat> so if you think about um, how you want the spirit world to be, that's how it's going to be. If you think, if you believe in all the trapped souls and in between things, then that's probably what you're going to experience yourself, in my opinion. But that's a different road, like I say. But my main point today, let's see what the message was there. Morning, Natalie. Morning, Andrea. Um, yes, thank you, Chrissy. Welcome home. My main point today... Um, was to try and give some guidance around the soul and around the ego there to kind of help you separate the both so that you can start to live a bit more purposeful and a bit more peaceful and a bit more in harmony with your soul's purpose. Now I'm off, it's quarter to 10, I'm going to go off to the lounge and uh, get back to the real world, get back to the real world after a week in the sun in Egypt which was amazing. Luckily, it's still hot and sunny here, so I can show off my tan. Um, but it's just nice, isn't it, to come home when it's still sunny. So I am, I have got some reading spaces this week. I've got no idea what yet. I've had a bundle of messages that I haven't even looked at. So I'll look at those, and if anyone wants to book a reading with me, then they can do. Um, but I'll probably try and get back to everyone today. Otherwise, I'll see you next Monday, Wednesday, in my Facebook group. We've got the second part of the tarot journey. We're looking at the symbols in certain cards. Wednesday from my Facebook group live. That'll be at nine o'clock. And I was meant to start my reverse tarot course tomorrow evening. However, I'm going to put it back because it's summertime and I've been away and haven't been plugging it at all. Um, so I'm going to change the date on that and we're going to move that back. In my head, I just want to enjoy the summer and not do proper work until September, really. Just do readings, not do so much teachings. However, I did think that I'm going to, once a month on a Wednesday, um, it's only going to be for six people, do some mini workshops on astrology and on tarot. Just some mini ones um, once a month on a Wednesday daytime. So if you're interested in any of that, you can let me know there. Uh, other than that, I'll be back next Monday to talk about something else. So have a lovely, lovely week and I hope that that has resonated with some of you and I hope that you can take something from it and just maybe just go about your day to day, just being a little bit more in touch with your soul's purpose.